Okay, got a couple more proofs here. These are actually a couple of proofs that we've seen from the previous homeworks here, so you might recognize these, but we'll still walk through it here. Uh, some of these steps are already kind of filled in, but I'll still go through them and where they come from. Uh, apparently, we got two given things. They put them in the same line, but if these were separate lines, you would write given two times if needed. Uh, not necessarily the case here. So angle 1 is 45 and angle 2 is 45. Uh, based off of that, we can say, well, okay, 1 is congruent to 2. Uh, honestly, they put substitution. I would even put transitive property here because they're all equal to each other. Not a really a big deal. They're kind of, you know, you can use substitution and set up transitive there on that, but transitive is probably the best. All right, I like this step here. This is a pretty common one that y'all will forget here. When you're switching formats from equal to congruent or vice versa, from congruent to equal, we're going to put definition of congruent and then just, you know, whatever you're dealing with here. These are angles, so technically it will say definition of congruent angles right there. I'm just going to use my angle symbol since I'm running out of room. Okay. And then if 1 is congruent to 2, that means this line here is actually a bisector, which is actually the last line. Any, anything you're trying to prove, I'll give you a hint, always goes there in that last line there. This will be AB, the segment AB is a bisector of angle DAC. And how do we know that? We already established that they're equal, and we would put definition of angle bisector for that right there. Now the proofs that are similar to these, you would have a key, I think, for them, or not a key, a, a word bank or a reason bank, so you'll be able to track those steps there. So that's that. Uh, let's move along here. We got this one here, uh, WXY is a right angle. That was given to us. Well, also given to us was angle one was equal to angle three or congruent to angle three. And notice here how those are both of your given things. Those are listed there. So you put given twice on this one. Okay. Now if something's a right angle that means technically it's 90 degrees and that's because we use the word right angle so that's definition of right angle. Okay. Now if um, we have 2 plus 3 here it is angle 2 plus angle 3 is the same thing as WXY right there. That's a small plus a small equals a whole. We've seen that once or twice earlier in the review. That's angle addition postulate. All right. Now, if 2 plus 3 is WXY, but WXY is 90 right there, we can replace the WXY with a 90 right there. Uh, substitution, really probably it's better to put that's really technically the transitive property. Honestly, if you put substitution, you probably still get full credit there. So you're kind of like, I guess you could say you're swapping those out. All right, next is your next given thing. Apparently one is congruent to three. Um, that was given to us. Uh, if one is congruent to three, then they're also equal. That's a definition of, uh, definition of congruent angles and then finally if we have okay yeah here we go if we're going from c to g or i'm sorry d to g right here they say two plus three is 90 therefore two plus one is 90 and what's happening is they're swapping out angle three with angle one and that's actually truly substitution substitution is more of when you're just changing one little piece versus transitive properties when a bunch of different things are equal. So that's actually a truly substitution property there. Uh, if you put transitive, technically that's not transitive since you're only swapping out one piece. So that's that proof right there. Let's try this last one here and I think we'll be good. Um, AB is equal or congruent to CD. So there's AB, there's CD. Uh, B is also the midpoint of AC. So right here, that's a midpoint, which means that cuts AC perfectly in half. Therefore, we're saying that AB is equal to BC. And we've already established AB was also equal to CD, so we can then therefore conclude that BC is equal to CD. And uh, that's what we're trying to prove there. So let's write down what we got here. First step here that was given. 
Actually, B is a midpoint of AC that was also given to us. Um, since B was the midpoint of AC, we said that these two pieces were equal. So I'm going to say AB is equal or congruent to BC. And if AB is also congruent to CD up here, then we can go and say that CD is congruent to BC, which also matches your proof line. That'll be it there. And that is your transitive property.